quick disclaimer in the beginning. All the testing is made in CP environment and the build is made for open world zero deal. It's not a dual build, there's, there's better dual builds out there that have more signal tower pressure. This, is, this build is, is focused on open world zero deal where it's all about burst and not damage over time. I run the same build in BGs as well, so it works. It could work in a non-CP environment, but I haven't tried it in open world zero deal non-CP yet. And in this video, I won't do any fancy editing, so it's just an uh, informative video, and it covers a lot of dry tier crafting. So, it, so this build is focused for these people that want to, that are interested in the fury crafting on a stamina warden in PvP. Hello and welcome to a new guide video. In this video I will explain why Desert Rose is a viable choice on Stamina Warden as well as why it has the potential to be one of the new meta builds. In order to do that I will compare my Desert Rose setup with two other well known meta builds. One of them is the Fury and Seven Legion setup and the other one is the Fury and Shacklebreaker setup. All three setups are 2H main bar and solid board back bar setups. I know that there are, for example, also the swollen board main bar setup with low slash and river bash. But for this video, I will only compare the 2H main bar setups. This video is to show that Desodros is a viable choice. And you can get more damage and more healing out of Desert Rose than running two damage sets. I will do another video comparing the 2H main bar setup with, with a Sword and Bolt main bar setup. Alright, let's compare the gear together. Um, you can see there's a difference in magical and magical recovery. I will talk about the magical sustain later in the video because it's a key part why Desert Rose is so strong as well as Shackle, the, as well as the Shackle is a viable choice. Now I want to talk about the stamina and the weapon damage increase and, and therefore the damage and healing increase with each set. So 7th gives 500 weapon damage that gets multiplied by a major br a brutality so you get 600 weapon damage in total. Shackle Breaker gives 2.5k stam and the stamina converted in weapon damage with a 10.46 ratio equals to 243 weapon damage that doesn't get buffed by major brutality. The Sedros and Agility Front Bar gives in total 1,900 stamina, that equals 183 weapon damage. So of course the 7th setup gives the most weapon damage and therefore the most damage out of the damage abilities as well as most healing. But you're limited to a certain amount of magical, magical utility skills. That means that you can barely sustain Ice Fortress, Green Lotus, or Leeching Vines, and Shivering Shield. Because the only magical sustain you will get is from Heavy Armor, Constitution Passive. The, the Class Passive Nature's Gift won't work when playing solo. Even if healing an ally includes yourself, it wouldn't change the fact that the testing was made with leeching vines where you would get the passive uh, regen when getting hit every second. So it, it wouldn't make a difference if it would work solo or not. Regarding the tests I did, to further illustrate the magical, magical sustain on the 7th legion setup, I will enter combat and I will keep up my ice fortress as well as my green lotus up all the time and cast Shimmering Shield every 10 seconds.
As you can see, I'm barely able to sustain the Ice Fortress Green Lotus and Shibirung Shield every 10 seconds with the 7th Legion setup. But it was enough sustain to be able to have a 100% uptime on the buffs. Now let's try the same thing again with one more magical ability and that's green uh, leeching vines. If I use four mag magic abilities, you can see that I'm not even able to cast every magic ability in the beginning, but you can solve the problem when you run some tri-stack glyphs, but that doesn't change the effect that you can't sustain it. There's no way you can there's no way to for you to sustain four magic abilities without some sort of magical region and therefore giving up weapon damage. If I run Etronrock Monostone and drop Warrior for the magical region, I'm able to sustain the first rotation of magica of my magic four magical abilities, but in the second rotation I struggle to keep up my Ice Fortress and I'm not able to cast Shimmering Shield anymore, so the sustain is too, still too low with Utter Moonstone. If you run Utternark Moonstone as well as one Region Glyph, you can see that you, you are able to barely sustain your magical rotation. If you make one mistake, if you cast one of your buffs too early, you will, you will have not a 100% uptime of your defensive buffs. So if, you're, if you want to fully be, uh, fully be able to sustain your magic abilities, you will need an Atronach Moonstone as well as two Region Glyphs. To be able to sustain Bird of Prey at every ult drop, you will need Atronach Moonstone as well as three Magicka Region Glyphs. I will explain later why you, will, uh, you would like to run Bird of Prey on a similar Warden. But with I mean, Atronach Moonstone as well as three Magical Region Glyphs, you're, bar you're barely able to sustain the full, rot full rotation. And if, if, if you make a mistake, you will struggle a lot more to, be able to have a good uptime on your defensive buffs, as well as be able to cast Bird of Prey before every Dawnbreaker drop. Now, now you can see a summary of the tests I did with the Fury plus 7 Legion setup. You can see that you're barely able to sustain the free magical utility skill setup with Ice Fortress, Green Lotus and Shimmering Shield, but it was barely enough with, without any extra region. If you drop your burst steel for Leeching Vines, you will need Atronarch Moonstone as well as two region glyphs to be, to be able to sustain the rotation. That means that you lose 582 weapon damage and with the Major Brutality you lose almost 700 weapon damage. If you want to run 5 Magical Utility skills, that means you drop your Spammable for Bird of Prey, you will ne need to run Atronarch as well as 3 Region Glyphs and with this setup you're barely able to sustain the rotation, that means you, str you struggle if you messed up, if you cost to, uh, if you cast one of your buffs too early, you will have problems sustaining it. Dropping another weapon damage glyph means you lose in total 755 weapon damage. With major brutality, that's 904 weapon damage loss. I'm gonna do the same thing now with the s s uh, Fury plus Shackle Breaker setup, as well as with the Fury plus Desert Row setup. After that, I will explain. Why you, would, uh, why you would sacrifice weapon damage for more magical sustain so you can sustain green lotus as well as leeching vines at the same time and on, to on top of that cast bird of prey before every ult turn. If, with the shackle breaker setup you are able to sustain three magical skills without problems. When you want to, uh, when you want to have four magical utility skills you will need at least one region glyph and then it's barely sustainable. With two region glyphs, you can sustain infinitively. And if you want to run five magical utility skills, you will need Atro as well as two region glyphs to be able to sustain your magicka. Last but not least, the Fury plus Desert Rose setup with a 60% uptime on Desert Rose, which is easily doable. If you run three magical ability, uh, utility skills, no extra region needed you still have insane sustain 
even for magical utility skills is easy, easily sustainable. When you, when you run 5 magical utility skills with 0 region glyphs, it's, it's sustainable. It's not good sustainable, but it's sustainable. And 1 region glyph, then you can infinitely sustain 5 magical utility skills. But in my opinion, the 1 region glyph is kind of overkill, so at 0 region glyphs, I find it it's at sweet uh, I find it a sweet spot for the magical sustain. On three magical utility skills, for example Ice Fortress, Green Lotus and Shimmering Shield, the best setup the be the setup with the most damage and most healing would be se the seventh legion setup. Uh, Fury plus seventh legion. That means um, you don't have to sacrifice weapon damage for magical sustain yet if you only run three magical utility skills. Shacklebreaker is also a good op option because it gives more sustain but you will lose a little bit of damage. If you run Desert Rose on a 3 magical utility skill setup, just don't. Just don't. It's, not, it's not worth. On a 4 magical utility skill setup, Sven Legion loses 100 weapon damage because you have to sacrifice for magical sustain to be able to use all for magical ability abilities. That means Ice Fortress, Green Lotus, Shimmering Shield and, uh, and Leeching Vines. Shackle Breaker will lose around 170 weapon damage if you want to keep all those 4 buffs up. And that's where Desert Rose st starts, starts to, to shine. With Desert Rose you won't sacrifice weapon damage for sustain, that means you still gain the 183 weapon damage and lastly the 5 magical utility skill setup that means Ice Fortress, back Ice Fortress, uh, Green Lotus, Shimmering Shield, Leeching Vines and Bird of Prey before every Dawnbreaker drop. With this setup, 7th Legion loses 304 weapon damage, Shackle Breaker loses even 450 weapon damage because both of these setups have to sacrifice weapon damage jewelries for magical sustain. Desert Rose is still able to sustain without sacrificing weapon damage enchant uh, weapon damage jewelries, and so it it does a uh, it gets 183 weapon damage bonus. Now the now the question remains unanswered: which setup is the best? Is the free magic utility skill setup better than better than the four magic utility skill setup, or is it, or is the five magic utility skill setup the best overall? Now let's start comparing the first two, the free magic utility skill setup with the four magic utility skill setup. That means you you have to uh, in the free magic utility skill setup you have access to a burst heal, the sh shooting spores which can help you out whenever you are low to get back up to f almost full health. That means you will trade a burst steel for leeching vines. Or if you run leeching vines and a burst steel, you drop burst steel for green lotus. Either way, you, you will get access. L uh, let's check out the first scenario. If you only have Green Lotus, you will have to Light Tech Weave to be able to get your Major Mending. As well as you will have to Light Tech Weave all the time or Heavy Tech to get Sustain back whenever you are with an ally. If you drop your Burst Heal for Leeching Vines, you will have a an have an passive heal over time that can proc every second. If you damage an enemy or if you get damaged, that means you will get, you will have a free proc on both of these passives. You will get crazy sustain as well as insane healing when low. That means you can kite without light, without being forced to light tech or heavy tech beef. So you will get sustain as well as healing out of this skill. Besides that. Leeching Binds provides another uh, additional healing in the skill itself. The second, the second scenario would be that you have Leeching Binds already, so you have access to both of these 
skills without having to weave all the time. That means you can kite if more efficiently and be more tanky with the healing and have more sustain. So if you, but you lack the heal from Green Lotus as well as the major savagery. That means you will have only 22% crit, 23% crit in heavy armor. With the Green Lotus, you will sit around 33%, which is insane in heavy armor. So you, you drop a burst heal for more heal over time, as well as more crit heals and more damage overall. In both scenarios, you drop a burst heal for more healing over time. That means you won't have, you won't need the burst heal that much anymore because the chances that you're getting low are, uh, will happen let, uh, less. Uh, the chances that will get low are, are smaller because you have more healing overall. So in my opinion, uh, dropping burst heal for another magical utility skill is totally worth it. So I, I prefer I prefer running the four mag magical utility skills over the three magical utility skill. So that means if you wanna be able to sustain all four magical utility skills, you have to uh, sacrifice ma uh, weapon damage for magical regen on the seventh legion setup. In comparison with the Desert Rose setup, you, you lose weapon damage and it makes the Desert Rose setup superior to the 7th Legion setup. If you, if you look at the 1, uh, one to four piece, 2 to 4 pieces, both setups have one useless, uh, useless, uh, set uh, one useless set bonus. For example, 7th Legion has health regen and Desert Rose has spell resistance even though spell resistance is slightly better than health region. 7 legion, but 7 legion has 5% crit in comparison with the desert rose uh, 1k magicka. But in the end, desert, uh, desert rose will have more raw damage than 7 legion in a 4 magicka utility skill setup. The last question that remains is whether the force utility skill setup is better than the 5 magical utility skill setup. So the difference is that instead of a spammable, I will use Bird of Prey. Let's start with the eerie perspective of the, of the, uh, of the comparison. Bird of Prey, slot, slotting Bird of Prey gives 2% 2 more damage and the minor berserk from Bird of Prey gives 8%. In total 10% and and to and to uh, to get a 10% higher tooltip on all your skills you need 700 free weapon damage while in well uh, when you use uppercut you will gain zero bonus weapon damage when fighting more than one enemy all right so let's compare a single target scenario and I will start with the 5 utility skill setup with Bird of Prey. Without the spammable, your main combo will be Bird of Prey, Bad Bird Light Attack, Subtrain into a Heavy Attack Downbreaker. If you, use a, if you use Uppercut, you won't be able to do a Heavy Attack before the Downbreaker, which reduces your damage of your Downbreaker because it, do, it doesn't get buffed from the 2H passives, passive that after you heavy attack, you deal 10% more damage. I just like this. So I will add up all the damage that I can do even on one target with the AoE setup. That means the heavy attack damage as well as the sub train and downbreaker damage buffed with Bird of Prey and compare it with, compare it with the uppercut damage uh, a light attack into uppercut into downbreaker damage. In a single target scenario, the the, the tooltip damage looks uh, looks looks like this. So, with the uppercut setup, you will have four five point seven k more tooltip damage, and that's that's in zero deal around two to three k damage on players. 
Of course, with uppercut, you will have more pressure in the meantime when you don't have ult. So you don't get, so the opponent isn't able to go full aggressive on you and has to play a bit more defensively. But in a 1 vs 1, against most matchups, almost no build can put you in a defensive position on a stem warden. So you see the damage difference is pretty small. 2 to 3 point K damage won't make the difference between killing someone and won't be able to kill someone. And uppercut as well as he and he uh, heavy attack is pretty obvious so either way a good player will block the, in uh, the incoming burst. So not having a spammable when playing solo in zero deal is almost not important because in the most of the most of the times you won't be able to focus one guy out of five guys fighting you so you you better off with the full focus on the aoe burst in the one versus one well yeah it's pretty it's nice to have a spammable to continue pressure the enemy but if you don't pressure him and he has he has not full damage build he won't be able to pressure you anyway so regardless you will uh, you, uh, you will only kill an enemy player with your ult so if you play around uh, only around your ultimate with the desert Rose setup without the spam build, and go all in on the ultimate burst you have more success of winning a uh, one versus one against good players tanky players aren't killable with an uppercut spammable as well so so at least you won't you will be able to one hit more squishier but like even though if they are ex more experienced you can still one hit them with the desert row setup in short play playing with four five match cast utility abilities is the most most efficient way to play a stamina warden in my opinion using using ice fortress Le Leeching Vines, Shimmering Shield and Green Lotus for defensive buffs and using Bird of Prey for the added bonus damage on your offensive abilities. To be able to sustain all 5 Magicka abilities, you will need a Magicka Sustain set. And the best one there is, is Desert Rose. You, you are able to back, back bar it only. And even with a 60% optimum on Desert Rose, you will have enough sustain to be able to run 3 weapon damage glyphs and a front bar agility 2 hander. And the damage, uh, damage you gain is more efficient than running 2 damage sets, for example Fury and 7th Legion, but sacrificing a lot of weapon damage for the magical sustain to be able to sustain every magical utility skill on the back bar as well as using Bird of Prey on the offensive burst opportunities. So in short short, th that means that the 7th Legion plus Fury with 3 weapon damage enchantments on glyphs deals the most damage. The Desert Rose setup deals approximately 6% less overall AoE damage, but for the 6% more damage on the first setup, you lose either Green Lotus or Vines, you can't have both of them, if you drop green, uh, green Lotus, you will lose 10% crit, as well as a good heal over time. And if you drop Vines, you, you're forced to light attack or heavy attack weave while kiting, else you won't get the sustain and the major mending proc when you're below 40% health. So in the end, you trade tankiness for more damage, but the more damage part isn't that huge of a difference, so I'd rather be more tanky and still be able to one-shot them in a 1 vs x scenario. Keep in mind that this build is made for open world, zero deal, as well as battlegrounds. The calculations are made in a CP environment and might vary, vary in non-CP. If you're looking for a dual setup, this is not it. This is, there are far mo better op uh, options for a dual specific one versus one build. The next few videos will be more entertaining again. Uh, but thanks for watching. 
and see you guys around.